What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're going to be comparing gaming laptops in a spectrum of prices. The goal is to figure out how each of these laptops performs when playing Fortnite. For this Acer Nitro 5, we're dealing with a quad-core i5-8300H GTX 1050 graphics card, which is going to perform admirably in mini titles at 1080p. It's got a backlit keyboard, IPS display, a plethora of excellent ports. This thing has a one terabyte standard hard drive, so it's gonna be really slow. It's gonna be very interesting to see how it performs today. Stepping up to the Dell G7, the processor on this bad boy is an i7-8750H. IPS display, a GTX 1060 Max-Q. This is their gaming focused budget lineup. This guy was purchased for $1,079. Moving on to the Razer Blade 15, actually the smallest 15-inch gaming laptop out there right now. It features an i7-8750H and a GTX 1070 Max-Q, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, gorgeous backlit keyboard, 100% sRGB, 144 hertz display, and this guy retails for right around $2,000, but depending on the model you get, this particular model Retails for right around $25.99. Moving on to the Aorus X9. This thing features the most powerful laptop processor currently available. It's the i9-8950HK. This thing is capable out of the box of overclocking to 4.3 gigahertz, and you can also overclock the graphics card that comes inside right out of the box just using your command center. It's got a GTX 1080 in it, which is the most powerful graphics card that you can get in a laptop to date. It features a full mechanical backlit keyboard for a great typing experience, a 144 hertz, very colorful display that matches the razor blades quality. And of course it has a one terabyte SSD and 32 gigs of RAM. So it is definitely the king and literally all of the possible specs out of all of these laptops. This Aorus X9 retails for $3,900 and depending on where you buy it, you may have to pay for shipping or tax so it could very well go above $4,000. Without further ado, let's get to testing these machines. Now for Fortnite, we decided to set all the laptops to the epic setting for the initial test so that we can see the comparison in performance. The first test is landing on the mountain next to the Dusty Depot and looking towards the mansion in the middle of Loot Lake. So we've got all four laptops lined up here from left to right, from cheapest to most expensive. And in the top left, we have the temperature from the CPU and GPU, as well as the current frame rate and the average frame rate since we started measuring the frames per second. Next up, we're doing a running test comparing the overall performance while running into the Tilted Towers map area. This test is a great representation of your performance when seeing lots of things in the distance. Now I did do some play tests of Tilted Towers with players in here. This is being tested in the playground mode, but even when you add players into the mix, the performance was still very similar. Let's go ahead and take a look at the average frames per second on a graph. You can see the Acer Nitro 5 got 46, the G7 got 77, the Razer Blade 15 got 103, the Or X9 got 136. It's a very interesting and consistent increase of about 30 frames per second in between each of the laptops. Now the important thing about the two cheaper laptops is that they only have 60 hertz refresh rate screens, while the Razer Blade 15 and the Aorus X9 both have 144 hertz displays. That means as a target with the first two laptops you want to be nailing above 60 frames per second, and with the two more expensive laptops you want to be hitting above 100 frames per second as a minimum, but ideally you want to be hitting that 144 hertz mark. How does this performance to the dollar match up on a graph? On Epic settings, the Dell G7 and the Acer Nitro are nearly identical, coming in right at $14 on a frame per dollar ratio. The Razer Blade 15 costs $25 per frame and the Aorus X9 is a whopping $28.67 per frame. This graph really shows you that you're paying the premium dollar for the Razer Blade 15 and the Aorus X9 and that you're getting a lot more frames for your money with the cheaper two laptops. Okay, so let's talk about each of the laptops and how they perform. Now the temperatures on the Acer Nitro 5 are actually quite good with the CPU hitting in the low 80s and the GPU never going above 75 degrees. Both the CPU and GPU are hitting the max possible boost clocks, which is really good. You can see that it's hitting right around 45 
45 frames per second in the tilted tower benchmark test. Now 45 frames per second is the bare minimum that you would want to even be able to play smoothly, but ideally you want to hit above 60 frames per second. We went ahead and played with the settings and set everything to medium with a 100% render scale rather than a 66% render scale because that causes it to be fuzzy. And you can see that on medium and epic settings it is nearly identical looking, the main difference being the anti-aliasing being lowered, which makes your lines a little bit more jaggy. Now that we've set the Nitro 5 down to medium, we actually managed to get an average of 91 frames per second, which is plenty enough to play on this 60 hertz refresh rate screen. Now with the Dell G7, we managed to get 77 frames per second on epic settings. Now the CPU and GPU had very good temperatures with the CPU never going above 80 degrees and the GPU staying right around 69 degrees. Now the CPU is also not maintaining a steady 3.9 gigahertz instead fluctuating between 3.4 and 3.9. Unfortunately, since this is a Max-Q GPU, we are being power limit throttled on the GPU, but nonetheless, we're still getting really good performance. Now with the Razer Blade 15, we managed to get 104 frames per second on average. The CPU temperature hovered right around the mid 80s with the boost clock varying from 3.4 to 3.9 megahertz. Now the good thing about the GPU is that it is not being thermally throttled at 76 degrees Celsius, but since it's a 1070 Max Q, it is being power throttled to right around 1400 megahertz. Now in some other games, we can manage boost clocks of up to around the 1600 megahertz mark, but that's because they're not optimizing the GPU usage. Taking a look at the Aorus X9 here, we have some really good temperatures of the CPU right in the mid 70s and maintaining a steady 4.3 megahertz, which is just absolutely fantastic and even has some headroom if you want to overclock it up to 4.5 gigahertz. Now the GTX 1080 is running a little bit warmer than the other graphics cards in this lineup and managing a stable and consistent high 1800 megahertz, which is just absolutely fantastic. Overall, the Aorus X9 is definitely the king of performance here. So in the case of Fortnite, it's definitely true that the more money that you pay, the more performance you're gonna get. But the thing is, you can lower the settings on the lower price laptops and get really high frames per second at the 1080p mark. The difference between medium settings and epic settings is hardly noticeable, which means that even on the cheaper laptops, if you just lower the settings, you can get absolutely superb frames per second and performance for the dollar. But if you have the money, you're definitely gonna get far superior performance going with the more expensive laptop in this situation, especially if you want the maximum settings and always hitting near that 144 frames per second mark. Overall, I thought this test was really interesting. What games would you guys like to see in future videos? Post them down below. And of course, I'll have links to these four laptops down below if you'd like to pick one of them up. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Brandon out.